Greetings everyone, the good tonight here, and today we're going to be taking a look at well a replica, but a replica of the Elcan Spectre DR. Ta-da! So we finally got a hold of an Elcan replica, but a decent replica, fortunately. So I mean we're only doing airsoft here with it. Unfortunately, we won't be moving it to real steel, but we'll probably get an Elcan at some point in the future when I am insanely rich. So, in the meantime, we got a decent little Elcan here. It looks absolutely fantastic on our Mark 18 build. So, what do we got going on all together? Well, you've got all the markings. I'm not actually sure who makes this replica, but you got all your fun little markings and stuff going on here. Windage adjustment, elevation adjustment, your two quick detach little levers there. And over on the fun side, you got your little battery cover. This one actually doesn't use the, um, was it the 134 Surefire batteries? This one actually uses a CR, was it 1620? It's a kind of a camera battery. I actually had to look around the electronics store to find that. And yeah, you got your knob here to adjust your um, red lighting for your optic. And you got your little mock iron sights up here on the top just in case things go horrendously wrong and you gotta shoot something up close. Now there's nothing fancy going on with the iron sights as you can see, just a line in a circle, so you can work around with that. I've got this moved up a little bit. The eye relief isn't as good as the real L can, for obvious reasons, but it's decent for what we need, so unfortunately I don't think we're gonna be able to get that close enough and aligned with the camera to where it really works. So there you go, kind of. So yeah, this is a nightmare. But yeah, you can see there's the 1x sort of setup. I'll tilt it a bit more. Yeah, this. Oh boy, this is a trip. So you can see there's a little dial and stuff there. And if we flip the lever here up forward, it'll flip the uh, mirror. And now we are zoomed in 4x. Where is it? Come on. Almost. Work with me. This is way easier when you establish a proper cheek. Well, yeah. See, you can see the grain of the wood and the flashlight. Cool. So, this is really hard to review to do, but you turn the light here over to full power, and bam, there you go. You can't really see what you're looking at, but you know you got a nice little illuminated bullet drop ordeal going on. So, it's a lot easier when you have your cheek wheel going on because you can see everything. And turn that light on, watch the battery case there, and does it get turned? And yeah, so. You can do some pretty cool stuff. It gives it a bit more of a recon feel. Now, a key thing to note that separates this from red dots, because you're kind of combining your 1x fanciness of a red dot for close quarters and stuff with your 4x ACOG, able to see and shoot at a distance and kind of eh, pen pineapple, apple pen that stuff, and see what happens. Now, it's not perfect, mind you. One of the key concerns that people are going to overlook is that when you're using a sort of like false 1x with how this works kind of magnifies is it's kind of like taking your right eyeball and shifting it just forward a wee bit of your left eyeball. So what's going on is your right eye is seen as if it was up here but your left eye is still seen as if it was back here which means things are going to be slant, uh, canted slightly when you're aiming in so if you do the two eyes open red dot thing and you aim in on something if your left eye is taking over the whole mental focus and stuff, you're actually going to be aiming to the uh, top right of where you're shooting. So you actually got to really focus or close your left eye until you get the hang of it on that right eye and what it's seeing and where it's putting the reticule and adjusting from there. So you've got a bit of a weird dual image thing going on when you're shooting, but you can work around it. And you can train around it, but you will not be as fast as just a standard red dot. However, if you're in a nice concealed position and you're really, really good at tracking the trajectory and uh, distance of those BBs, then zooming into the 4X and being like, oh, well now I can clearly see this guy hanging out in a tower, and I can see where my BBs are dropping off, so I can adjust my aim here, and there you go. So, that's what's fancy about the Elcan. Now, we are using a shorter barrel Mark 18, but airsoft-wise, we can work with it, and if we put a tight bore barrel in there, we'll really get maximum value out of the old can. And like I said earlier, if things are going horrendously wrong, you can actually kind of not really, um, it's not point shooting. You can do point shooting pretty effectively if they're already on top of you and you don't have time for your red dot stuff. And if you can't really get that eye relief thing, then you got your backup sights up here. 
And as you can see, you can actually unscrew those and cant them off over to one of the sides if you want to be shooting from here and then just pop your weapon this way to shoot or this way if you're wrong-handed, so. Cool options, neat little thing. I don't know if I showed you guys enough of this side, but yeah. So you can see where your throw switch is, you push down on that and then forward. It'll lock into place otherwise, so. That's all that does, and as you can see from the front here, there's the little mirror, you flip it off to the side and then you're in full zoom mode. So I think the way to design this replica is it's actually more of a, uh, a lens on the front there that's designed to, um, it's got a built-in, I think, from the way it looks to me, it's got a 4x permanent zoom in going on, then you have like a 4x reverse, uh, whatchamacallit, microscope, and they're kind of working against each other, and that's why you get that weird fake 1x thing going on. So it's slightly off, but it works. And again, we are fortunately only doing airsoft to know real-world operations. If you're taking airsoft gear to do real-world operations, then... Yeah, um, ultimately not recommended would be how I'd put it, but Airsoft Lies, this is fantastic. Would I consider buying a real LCAM? I mean, yes. However, we do now live in an age of Vortex 1-10 to optics and even the EOTech Voodoo with its uh, 1-6, to is it? I think it's still 1-6 to or 1-8, to one of the two. I'm pretty sure it's 1-6. to And they're still more or less cheaper than LCANs, and you can do more as you can actually really adjust the zoom by just rotating that back end piece instead of just a quick mirror flip. So, cool stuff. Would love to test out the uh, EOTech Voodoo at some point. I'd probably buy one of those before a realistic LCAN, but in the meantime, just want to show you guys, hey, we got we finally got that LCAN we've been working at for uh, years now. And it's about 500 grams, so it's about a pound. So basically take a full loaded magazine and slap it on the top of your rifle. And that's more or less what you're working with. So, cool stuff, legit, very much enjoy it, and I'll be very eager to see how this actually holds up and test on the range. Fortunately, we got one that came with a uh, built-in protective lens, so we don't have to worry about damaging it. So, that's all I got for you guys. Uh, stay chivalrous, stay Gucci, and um, get out and train. So, cheers. See ya.